fruits, legumes, and even some savory fare. These culinary additions are just waiting in your cabinet for you to take your cakes to the next level of deliciousness. You might not associate soup with cake, but it turns out it's one of the best-kept secrets in the kitchen. The idea supposedly dates back to the turn of the 20th century, before rising agents such as baking powder and baking soda were readily available. Like buttermilk, tomato soup contains the acid necessary to form bubbles and make the cake rise. The first known recipe was printed in 1922, when Great Depression-era bakers had to settle for cheap ingredients. This cake was popular throughout the first half of the 20th century, though it's since fallen out of favor. Tomato soup provides a combination of the coveted characteristics of lightness and moistness. As long as you pick a plain soup, the final product won't actually taste like tomatoes. Instead, it will be soft, moist, sweet, and just a little tangy. Despite its subtle sweetness, coconut milk is often found in savory recipes. But when added to desserts, it unlocks another dimension of rich flavor. Whether you're using it alongside coconut shavings or simply substituting it for dairy milk, coconut milk will take your baking in a whole new direction. If you're substituting coconut milk for dairy milk, always stick to the full-fat version. Reduced-fat varieties will add liquid without providing the silky texture, and the cake may turn out dense rather than rich. If the recipe calls for full-fat yogurt or cream, you can take things a step further by using only the creamiest part. Coconut milk tends to separate, leaving you with a thick, white layer at the top of the can and a thin, translucent layer underneath. Using the top layer will give you the creamiest dairy substitute. Condensed milk is often used in recipes for flan, fudge, and key lime pie, but it can also certainly be used to enhance the texture and flavor of cake. It was invented by Gail Borden in the 1800s as a way to preserve milk. The process involves boiling off most of the water in the milk, adding sugar to prevent the growth of bacteria, and sealing it in cans. When it comes to baking, condensed milk provides a dense, sweet, milk-flavored substance that doesn't drown the other ingredients in liquid. It can be used in any recipe that calls for milk and sugar, but you'll need to adjust the recipe to avoid something overly sweet. Condensed milk provides moisture and richness, making it perfect for heavy, decadent cakes rather than airy ones. You can try it in a strawberry cake, or you can kickstart your holidays by including it in a candy cane cake. Like condensed milk, evaporated milk is one of those mysterious ingredients that crops up in various recipes, but that many home bakers would struggle to define. Unlike condensed milk, it isn't sweet, so you can utilize it in savory recipes. It's made by simmering away part of the water content in fresh milk, but since it doesn't contain added sugar, it's thinner in consistency than condensed milk. Inside this familiar shape is the best start for the best meals you'll ever cook. Evaporated milk can be used instead of cream in cake recipes, or instead of milk if you want a richer texture. It provides a creamy, lightly caramelized flavor, and it imparts a subtle beige or warm tan color compared to the pure white of milk. Because it doesn't have added sugar, you can easily swap it in for milk, though if you don't want a rich, dense texture, you should add a few teaspoons of water. Cherries are an expensive and labor-intensive baking ingredient. If you buy them fresh, you'll have to remove the pits by hand. If you buy them frozen, they tend to bleed into the batter and turn it pink. Cherry pie filling offers a solution. For one thing, it's generally more affordable than the fresh version. Furthermore, it doesn't bleed into the batter, which is great news if you're using it to make a decorative swirl. Be aware that you'll need to adjust the sugar in the recipe to accommodate for the added sweetness in the filling. But besides that minor inconvenience, it's an easy addition that adds color and a deliciously sharp flavor to an otherwise plain cake. Whether it's spooky season or the middle of summer, pumpkin is always a winning ingredient. When it's incorporated into cake, canned pumpkin provides a luscious, moist texture and a hint of sweetness. It also imparts a rich orange color that heightens the overall appeal and contrasts beautifully with cream cheese frosting or a light buttercream. When adding pumpkin to cake, you might as well go all the way and also include a healthy dose of cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, and ginger. You can use plain pumpkin puree and add spices or opt for a can of pumpkin pie filling. If you choose the latter, make sure to cut back on the prescribed amount of sugar in the recipe. Whether you're making a pumpkin coffee cake or keeping things sweet and fluffy with something like a marshmallow pumpkin cake, canned pumpkin is a unique ingredient that imbues almost any recipe with a sense of coziness and comfort. Chestnuts are nutritious and unique in their high moisture content. Unless you have access to fresh chestnuts and plan to use them within a week or two, you should buy the preserved version. Canned chestnuts have been peeled, cooked, and preserved in water or syrup, and you can buy them whole, chopped, or pureed. 
They have a mildly sweet and nutty flavor and a meaty texture that makes them delicious in both sweet and savory dishes. When adding chestnuts to cake, you have multiple options. If you're using chopped chestnuts, you can simply toss them into the batter. However, many recipes call for puree, which can be folded into the batter or mixed with sugar and butter to make a creamy, nutty icing. Chestnuts are often paired with chocolate, but you can add them to any kind of cake to introduce a sweet, buttery flavor. The chestnuts they get on Lugi Draghi Day! Canned pineapple has a long history of being included in desserts, although some might dismiss it as a retro ingredient. From Watergate salad to puddings and trifles, it conjures images of lace curtains and shag carpets. Very shagadelic! But don't discount this sweet, tangy fruit. It provides flavors and textures that you can't get from anywhere else, and it's much easier to prepare than a spiky whole pineapple. Cakes that feature canned pineapple include hummingbird cake and some carrot cakes, and you can take it even further than that whenever you want to go for a tropical spin. In addition to its sweet, tangy flavor, this fruit offers moisture and a fibrous texture. And unlike fresh pineapple, which can be tough and stringy, the canned version is much softer and doesn't necessitate the use of dental floss. You might associate mandarin oranges with elementary school lunches, but these little citrus wedges are just as well-suited to home baking as they are to cafeteria trays. With their light, summery flavor, they can put a fresh spin on just about anything. The main things to consider when adding mandarin oranges to cake are their sugar content and their added liquid. Unless you have an insatiable sweet tooth, you'll need to par back the sugar in the recipe to accommodate. Furthermore, mandarin oranges are 85% water, and when you combine that with the syrup they're usually canned in, it will impact a cake's texture. Draining the oranges will help, as will cutting back on the other liquid in the ingredients. Alternatively, you can simply replace the liquid in the recipe with the syrup from the can. If you happen to stumble across a shelf of deeply discounted cans of cranberry sauce during the holiday season, go ahead and gobble them right up. They might languish in the cabinet after Thanksgiving, but they're a surprisingly delicious addition to cakes at any time of the year. Cranberries are tart and juicy, and with the addition of plenty of sugar, they're also sweet like candy. <laughs> candy! There are many ways to incorporate cranberry sauce into a cake. One option is to add it directly into the batter to create a pink hue. Another is to pour half the batter into the cake tin, spread the cranberry sauce on top, and then cover it with the second half to create a red streak through the middle. You can also add it on top of the batter, giving the surface of the cake a red marble finish. Another option is to blend the sauce into a frosting or glaze, blending a vibrant, rosy tint and tangy flavor. Chickpeas can be used as a starchy, neutral-flavored substitute for flour, and they're also the gold standard when it comes to vegan substitutes for eggs. The liquid found in a can of chickpeas, known as aquafaba, can be whipped into stiff white peaks just like egg whites. This is because chickpeas contain the same proteins that cause egg whites to stiffen. When baking a cake, you can use aquafaba just as you would eggs. If the instructions call for stiff, white peaks of egg whites, you can whip the viscous liquid by itself before folding it into the batter. Or if a recipe specifies whole eggs, simply mix the liquid with the wet ingredients as specified without beating it first. It might sound like an unlikely substitute, but you probably won't notice a difference between a cake made with eggs and one made with aquafaba. In recent years, unfriendly weather has ruined peach crops across the country. During rough times like this, this classic fruit can be very expensive, and their quality can vary greatly, which makes canned peaches a welcome alternative. Whether peeled, sliced, or pitted, they're reliable, versatile, and cost-effective. Their juicy sweetness is balanced by a slight tanginess, while their thick, almost creamy texture is perfect for baking. After some time in the oven, they're so soft that they almost melt in your mouth. Perhaps the easiest way to incorporate canned peaches into cakes is by draining them and layering them on top of the batter. You can also line them on the bottom of the pan for an elegant upside-down cake, or sandwich them in between cake layers. No matter what kind of cake you're baking, canned peaches will make a great recipe even better. You know, I can uh, eat a peach for hours. Despite their many similarities to pumpkin, sweet potatoes don't show up in a ton of cake recipes. They're sweeter and starchier than pumpkins, making them slightly creamier when baked. Using canned sweet potatoes saves you from the hassle of having to roast them yourself. Like pumpkins, they take a long time to cook, and when you're already setting aside an hour or two to make a cake, 
you don't want to tack on another 30 minutes or an hour just to cook the potatoes. Adding sweet potatoes to a cake is easy. Simply pour them into the batter with the rest of the wet ingredients. They'll turn the cake into a pleasing shade of orange and impart a natural, earthy sweetness that's surprisingly distinct from pumpkin. Their flavor is so irresistible that you don't need to add as many spices as you would in a pumpkin spice cake. Letting the sweet potatoes speak for themselves will ultimately yield delicious and unique results. Before you shudder at the very thought of black beans and cake, please allow us to make our case. You can blend them into a paste and use them as a nutritious and tasty alternative to flour. When liberated from their typical associations with tacos and soups, black beans are remarkably mild in flavor, and their high starch content makes them creamy when blended. Black beans are most commonly found in chocolate cakes. Their flavor is hidden behind the distinctive taste of the chocolate, and their darkness deepens the color of the cocoa powder. When making a cake with black beans, make sure that you're using a can that has no salt to avoid something that tastes like a horrible mashup between dinner and dessert. Then, whip up your favorite chocolate buttercream frosting and prepare to be amazed at how delicious the final product is. Yum.